Hi everyone, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. My name is Sister Rose Mwangi from the Franciscan Elizabeth and Sisters. I am a counseling psychologist and coordinator of the career services in Quea. The Catholic University of Eastern Africa, in preparation for the celebration of the International Women's Day on Tuesday 8th March 2022, has the theme Gender Equality for a Sustainable Tomorrow. And today I'm here to talk about women and mindfulness. What kind of a woman are we talking about? that very woman who is created in the likeness and in the image of God. A woman who wears very many hats. And when I talk of hats, I'm talking of that very woman who is charged with very many responsibilities. Woman, a mother, like you can see, wearing the heart of motherhood. Motherhood meaning she's very warm, she's very caring, very concerned, very hospitable, very generous in her own capacity. And a woman who is able also to deny a lot in order for her children to have something to eat. A woman, a mother, at the same time, who has the greatest love of nurturing life, had a new life, especially through procreation. At the same time, the same woman, she's a sister who is able to give a shoulder to everybody in the society and especially being able to listen, especially in a situation where people are very busy working from morning to evening. She has time and above all, she has also time to listen to herself. She's able also to support herself and the same woman the woman who is the wife. She's the one who upholds the fidelity, especially with her own spouse, the husband. And not only to the husband alone, she is modeled by Jesus Christ, who is also the spouse for the church. And at the same time, she's also the one who is a model for other women. And at the same time, the very, very same woman, I'm looking at a professional. She's wearing this kind of a hat. You see me wearing a professional, a worker in her own capacity. Works very hard to provide for the basic necessities for her family. And as she goes out of her way, doesn't matter what kind of work she has to do. And on average, this woman, we find her doing the very, 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 very dignified jobs like cleaning toilets, keeping services, pavements clean, yeah, doing very, very many things, weaving. This is the kind of a woman we are talking about. And sometimes she spends sleepless nights in order to provide for her family. And she's very happy sometimes also looking at other biblical women, Bible women, like Dorcas, a woman who will go out of her way, you know, even to change the environment. This is the kind of the woman we see changing the environment around and makes it habitable in terms of so of uh, getting engaged in small groups of women in order still to uplift the family living and provide for the basic needs. And at the same time, like we talked of the mother, She's not the woman who is able to be obedient uh, to the call of life because all the women, they are channels of life. Whether they are women, religious, single women, that is majorly the vocation that God has given them to give life. And we have one of the women that I would recommend all the women, both young and old, to model their lives with Dorcas in the book of Acts. And then again, when we look at this woman, she's the one who is able to nurse.
she's a nurse in the sense that she becomes the healer of both body and soul and at the same time she's able to uphold the spirituality the connectivity of her family members to god and above all she's also the one who is connected to god she sits all the time you know to have a personal relationship with god in order for her to uphold you know her dignity so she's centered on god and at the same time she's also this woman we are talking about who brings about the beauty and what we see in creation the woman is referred to be the crown of creation and at the same time she's the one who brings us about this beauty because if you look at all of us women we have a very natural beauty that is given to us by god looking at our own hair the kind of choice of dress we have the way we keep you know our things the way we organize our homes and this is one of the areas that we are looking at this one woman who is wearing this hat of natural's tinashas beauty on the other hand when we look at this woman because she's the very same woman and charged with very many responsibilities sometimes she tends to forget herself and forgetting herself means sometimes she's not able to mind about herself because she's too busy spending a lot of time thinking about others and it is the high time where we think also of the challenges we have gone through because of the pandemic the covid-19 we have seen what is happening in our own families the same woman has got a lot of she has a lot of um, expectations eh? so mainly that's why today i'm talking about mindfulness and when we talk about mindfulness is simply referring to uh, the aspect of this one woman being able you know to be kind to herself to know that she has a value she has worth and she has to be compassionate about herself just being kind you know and being patient that uh, she should be able to have also time you know to soothe herself you know to value herself to do something that is able to give her like a, a kind of a relief and at the same time this woman we are talking about she's also uh, the very same one we are sharing the same <coughs> we call it humanity like we have already mentioned regarding what is happening with the changes brought about by the covid automatically this woman is very busy multitasking so today even when we think of our community the queer community we would wish if this woman is able to get some time and uh, try to uphold her dignity And here we look at some concrete aspects that uh, every woman should become aware of. For example, that she has a lot of inner strength. And in order for her also to balance, it is very, very important for her uh, to become aware of the capabilities, the potentialities that she has, eh? so that she's able also to balance. Because if she is not balancing, at the end of the day she will be suffering burnout so it is very very important uh, for her to even know how she is able to balance her time and how she can develop herself emotionally and uh, we shall have also the next speaker will be talking about how this woman charged with so many responsibilities would uh, apply one of the qualities we are referring today in the society the emotional intelligence eh? so she will talk about that and then also again it is very very important for this woman we are talking about yeah to become aware of some of the exercises that she can do we refer to them as uh, self compassion exercises eh? where she is able every day to get time and have quite time even if it is 5 to 10 minutes yeah is it in meditation 
that would do the word of God or even going around and walking around even as she's maybe taking care of the nature she gets some few minutes you know to meditate and look at the beauty the beauty of nature as it is even reflected in a very natural way in her own life in her own being a woman and at the same time today we are also talking about uh, enhancing mindfulness even by minding what people eat and uh, actually we talk about eating everything consuming everything in moderation and at the same time also having that ability even to have time you know to share with others because many times because of these many responsibilities that are carried by women they end up being maybe drawn and sometimes feeling very much alone and uh, a good number of them go into depression so that's why today we are talking on a very right note how important it is for the woman also to mind even the camp kind of the company she keeps is always important you know to look for avenues where one will be able to share their own concerns to her friends and uh, in here for example we have a very powerful department of counseling psychologists and uh, i hope you're aware that uh, the services offered in queer they are free they are free to both students the staff both their auxiliary staff the teaching staff and also the administrative staff and we have also the place uh, the, the offices they are in this your hall almost the whole of uh, the ground floor we have five offices with a well trained and qualified uh, mental health practitioners then again it's also important to note that um, due to what this woman experiences that um, they are um, a number of uh, qualities that one has also to enhance even before thinking what other people can do or what helps i would be able to get as a woman from other women that's why we are talking of mindfulness what am i able to do also for myself in order to unlock also those potentials that we have and at the same time be able to strike a balance because it's also very 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 important to strike a balance especially in the area of relationships because we have talked about the woman has the ability you know to accord herself that compassion to have that healthy relationship with herself and at the same time being very present to whatever is happening because we are aware these days many of the women in our world many times we even don't remember what we did yesterday or even what we were dressed in yesterday we didn't even feel the water running down when we were taking our showers and that's why today we are calling the women you know like to have calm time if we are sharing a cup of tea or we are eating a plate of food we are able really to taste that food you know and experience also the beauty yeah? we are maybe the very same people who have to pay at that food can we really enjoy you know can we really enjoy to eat that food and appreciate still that beauty and the dignity of the woman you remember the woman who God created to bring order into the society even when we remember Adam was very miserable, very lonely. But when the woman came to place, the whole world changed. And this is the kind of the woman we are talking about, like Dorcas. Her presence in the community brought about change. Then another quality that has to do with also creating a very positive mindset in the life of a woman, it's when the woman is able to create also a very healthy relationship even in terms of um, uh, the outlook she has many women they think they are not good they are not capable they are not beautiful actually this is what we are talking about today that women have to change this narrative and look at themselves as beautiful because they share the beauty that is given to us by God and at the same time see that they are capable what i'm talking about is also how they will unlock the potentials within them 
not exaggerated, but be able to strike that balance. Then another issue is the issue of the relationships with the others. Because on the other hand, like we have seen, women are also social beings in a very, very strong way. And if we are talking about if we today, being held, understood, and lead in moderation. So when I do look at uh, the relationship with others, it's very, very, very important also to develop this attitude that is based on the two laws of, um, they call them the, the, the law of two poisons. Very interesting. Where we find that um, uh, sometimes many women, they tend to think that they are wrong and all the others are right. And it can also be the opposite. That some of them, some of us, we might think that we are always right and the others are always wrong. When it comes to the relationships, we'll be able to meet a block in the sense that uh, it will be very difficult to come at table and discuss the issues that are affecting us and be able to build a very harmonious, you know, living together society. So it is very, very important to know things about this quality of our relationship that uh, I can be wrong sometimes. I can also be right. And in the same way I look at the other people in the same way. Then of course, the other aspect is uh, being very positive in our outlook. No, where we, even if things are not, you know, going on well according to the way I would wish. On the personal level, be able to look at life, you know, positively. That even if today you do not have money, because there is the challenge of the COVID and I have lost a job. But on the other hand, I have too much work because so many people have been laid off. What am I supposed to do? Imagine, you know, we call those asthmatical, you know, answers to magical questions that tomorrow will be better. Even if I don't have money, there is still something that I can do as a woman. By the way, the women are very creative. And that's why when we look at that topic on uh, women holding one another, we'll be able to see the potential we have, especially in our community in Kwe. We have very many different women, both young and old, who are doing little things in order to mitigate this challenge of maybe not having some finances. Yeah? And other women are also engaging in one or two, three jobs in order to be those women we talked about, the women, the mother, you know, the women, the wife, yeah, who are charged with a lot of responsibilities. And in that way, we will be able to become also resistant, resilient, bouncing back from adversity. I've lost a job. What can I do? I have too much work in the office. Who is helping me? You know, the issue of disappointment, failure, and not giving up. Even when we lose members of our own family, the loved ones. This is also one of the challenges we have faced in our community, that we lost some of our colleagues, and we have been going through you know, a, lot of, um, a lot of pain, grief and loss, and maybe nobody listens to us. So when we think of mindfulness, well, how do we begin? One, in order to let go and to heal our woundedness, it is very, very, very important. Uh, to allow the people to go, to go in peace, and in case we had interacted with them and uh, we didn't have also the opportunity, for example, to forgive them because of one thing or the other, something maybe happened in our relationships. Even the Bible, you know, it guides us to forgive the people, let them rest in peace. We still have our journey to make. This is very, very important. And those who are very close to us, because a number of them are very close to us, we worked, we sat uh, in the same offices and we shared desks and so forth. It's very, very important also to nurture that now spiritual relationship. That those people, we are still bothered with them, they have gone before us. Now, they are living in a capacity where they pray for us. In our part as the church teaches, keep praying for them because they are still our brothers and sisters and we are united with them spiritually. Even if we don't see them physically, 
with God, they still continue to pray for us. And that's the only way we would also keep the board because they are very close to us. That's what we believe in. Then again, when we look at uh, mindfulness, this according ourselves that compassion because we deserve it. We are good people, that's what we are talking about. And not to be overwhelmed, you know, with the very many things, the many hearts, the many responsibilities that we carry. It's good also to realize that uh, mindful self-compassion has these kind of benefits that one, we will have very little problems with the self-esteem because we are convinced essentially we are good. We are good because God is good and this is what we are and we have no apologies about this. We are really good and this is also what is expected for us that wherever we are, we transmit goodness. And there should be nothing else other than goodness. But on the other hand, we believe we have you know, the inclination to be human. Once we are able to afford ourselves this value that is typical or beautiful to every woman, on the other hand, we become strongly productive in the sense that um, we'll be able to stabilize, be level-headed, and be able also to deal with our own emotions in the sense that we are aware that emotions, we say they have no morality. They are neither good or bad. What matters is the way we are able to handle them. And that's why today we'll have a, a very nice topic on emotional intelligence. Because the world today is also like um, based on the emotional intelligence. And on the other hand, another benefit once we apply those small exercises I was talking about, you know, when I can focus on an activity that I'm very aware, I'm living to the present moment, you know, I can taste the food, I can become aware that I'm dressing up, and I'm dressing up not to impress anybody, but because I'm at home with myself, this is what really matters, it is to be a woman of substance, eh? that I'm not there really maybe just comparing myself with uh, the other woman. I'm myself, and I'm happy to be really myself. And that's why I'm able to like uphold this dignity of really who I am. You know, just being really who I am. And I know what I'm made of in terms of my strength. We talked of the strength, the inner strength, strength, yeah, that will allow me to really appreciate what we said who I am. And that's why we will be able to become very strongly productive and uphold that well-being, that, that stability that we need in order to balance in the way we live. Then again, we will be able to, to demonstrate very healthy behavior patterns eh? and at the same time be able to build very healthy interpersonal and intrapersonal relationships, especially in our working place and wherever we are. And of course, we become more compassionate towards others because already what we are wearing is that compassion. When people are going through different challenges of life, we can hear, we can listen to them. Maybe sometimes we do not even have a solution to them because in many cases, people in their own uh, strength, they have solutions to their problems. And I would say this is exactly what I do in my profession as a mental health practitioner, I don't give people solutions, neither do I give them advice, but I work with them so that they are able to unlock those potentials that are within them and they are able to solve their own problems in the best way possible. And at the same time, people become motivated you know, even to see the resources that are there within their reach and even those ones that are hidden. And again, I would want to say, even if you are talking of this mindful self-compassion, you know, awareness, that it really makes me to live in the present moment and be really at home with myself, there is also what really <laughs> mindfulness. This being compassionate is not. And one of them is not just being nice to ourselves. We really don't just need to be nice. Yeah, we have to go beyond that word nice. Because when we are charged with the responsibility, remember the many hearts we talked about. Do 
really they just need to be nice. And that's what I talked about. We really need to value ourselves because we have a dignity that goes beyond just being nice. And the one example that I would give, if I, I just want to feel nice, I keep buying an ice cream every day. What will happen even to my health every lunchtime because I want to feel good? I want to entertain myself. Yeah? Maybe I say I want to take one bottle of beer. What will happen when I'm just taking the junk food? And there earlier on we talked about you know, that kind of healthy eating yeah? and everything in moderation. Then we talk about uh, uh, this issue of uh, you know, mindfulness. It's also not being aggressive. Yeah? I will not be aggressive, I will not be an activist because I'll be at home with the agenda of being a, being a female. Eh? And I give the best out of being a woman. Because what we see even in the Bible, that God created man and woman, equal in dignity, and at the same time, very different, complementary to one another. And this is also here what we are trying to bring about today. We are talking about gender equality. And there would be no world of women alone. We need men on board in order for us to bring about that unity, the communion that God really, you know, had, that communion he had in the very beginning, and the plan he has also of humanity, that man and woman, they have to coexist and be able to live together. So there is no issue of being my true and being aggressive because I'm not like the other. And then at the same time, it's not also just being complacent. It is being the who I am. And in this situation, today we are talking about what we can really do. Maybe as we prepare for this great day, the Women's Day, I would wish if every woman in the world, and especially the woman in our community where, is able to take these uh, activities, because they are also activities, they are also mental activities, what I decide that may work for me mentally, you know, spiritually, socially, because we are social beings, and uh, how I will be able also like to balance my own life and live, you know, in that kind of joy and happiness that is wished for each one of us by God. And at the same time, something one thing that I would want us also to watch out: there is what we refer to as a compassion burnout. Compassion burnout, and I feel maybe. Many of us are victims about this because whatever we do as women, we want to give the best out of our, out of whatever is given to us. But on the other hand, we might overdo it. The exaggerated way, especially we, the kind of work we do here to the people who have been serving people during the COVID. You know, too many people to mark, too many students to teach, you know, very many deadlines to meet, and so forth. And sometimes it's not very easy. So that is the only one of the things that I would really want to watch out so that we are able to uh, like explore the many avenues that we can use in order to begin from where we are, from who we are, and give the best out of who we are and be able to bring about the well-being, you know, mental well-being, the social well-being, holistic approach to our own life and also be able to become productive and work at ease. And at the same time, I have um, two remedies. Even when we look at uh, what we have to watch out, all you know, this burnout, uh, compassion related, the burnout related to being too much compassionate, eh? and especially to ourselves, so that we don't also become selfish, because We'll be suffering now, it is all about me. No, if I'm able, you know, like uh, to love myself, automatically I'll be able to love the other people. And that's why I have two. Uh, I begin by there is a woman who can also be a model for us, and this is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Actually, she's a saint of our time, she's a saint of our time, a very ordinary woman. She was actually a teacher from a very noble family. But uh, once she encountered, you know, the dying in the streets of Calcutta, that is the moment when her life changed. And her life will change because of one thing.
she will not work because she really wants money. Actually, for whatever she does, she says she's a need to give me millions, I wouldn't care. But what is the motivation? What is the drive? Actually, it is the compassion that will drive her to really serve the people with her whole heart, her whole mind, and her whole everything. And I think this would be our attitude today, that uh, we are selfless and we are going to serve people until it hurts. And I believe this is also what we are doing. And at the same time, even when maybe sometimes, when we look at uh, the shared humanity I was also talking about, there is also on this other hand, we have some individuals who understand, you know, our plight, what we go through on daily basis, and it is Jesus. So I'm inviting each one of us as women to do even as we prepare for that great day to always turn to Jesus. He's telling us to trust in Him and to ask whatever we need in His name and it will be provided. So the big question is, have we asked what our, for whatever we need in the name of Jesus and it has not been provided? Let us be women who are loving to the end you know, to love, to serve until it hurts, like Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She's our model, we can also pray through her. And at the same time, we have Jesus. You know, in Jesus, there is everything. Let's run to Him when we need, because we can trust Him. Thank you so much. God bless you.